It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. Which way are the bargains? Behind the wheel of a classic car. Do you know where we are? And a girl to scar Britain for antiques. Act one, scene one. The aim, to make the biggest profit at auction. <laughs> but it's no mean feat. There'll be worthy winners... We're in the money. ..and valiant losers. Art. Broken. Close your ears. Will it be the high road to glory? It's just delightful, isn't it? Or the slow road to disaster? <laughs> This is Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. Rise and shine, road trippers. We're up with the lark and raring to go. Did you wake up competitive today? I did. Yeah, and then I went back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you believe it, eh? Our experts, Irita Marriott and Raj Bizram, are both in it to win it. We're uh, halfway. I know, halfway through the road trip. I thank God I did all my preparations before I came on this one. Preparations? I was getting up at five every morning, doing a run. I went to the gym. And then after that, I was on a special diet. You have no idea. You have no idea the prep I've gone into. <laughs> OK. That's got you worried, hasn't it? And it seems to be working. On their last mad dash around the shops, and you are off your trolley. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you! Oh. Raj went a bundle on bright bits of glass. There's something about it which appeals to me. While Arita set her sights on ever more unwieldy items. Like what? <laughs> and while no one covered themselves in glory at the auction. Oh. What is this? A hard work. Raj came out of it slightly more unscathed. Sold it away at 45. It's... I can't quite believe that. That makes it one auction apiece in our best of five battle. It's all to play for as we head into round three. Are you enjoying your time? So so. <laughs> at least you're honest about it. <laughs> No, I'm loving it, Rita. I'm being driven around by a beautiful woman in a beautiful car. What's not to love? <laughs> now he gets all the charm out. <laughs> Too late, Raj. Cheeky. Well, the old smoothie started out with £1,500 to spend across the whole trip. Two legs in, and that's now down to £995. Rita started with the same amount and has managed to spend a wee bit more. She got £970 for the rest of her shopping and the use of this 1960s Vandam Pla princess, of course. Oh, it's posh. Don't you think that when you sit in this seat, you're so upright? I can imagine if you were in a private school and you had to have a proper posture at the desk. Yeah, you look very, very upright. <laughs> Your deportment, as they say. When I get out of this car, I'll be like Popeye. Not because of the muscles, but because you know how Popeye's bum sticks out. I have to be honest, I never really noticed Popeye's bum. Oh. I'm going to get out and my bum will be sticking out. If you expect me to talk about your bum in any way, <laughs> shape or form, you can forget it, OK? And that's the bottom line. <laughs> so far on this cross-country constitutional, we've seen both sides of the Welsh border. We're now heading east, aiming for a final auction at Market Harbour. Am I going to make it to the top of the hill? Of course Am I going to make it to the top? Drama queen, on this leg of the trip, We'll be meandering through the Midlands, ending up in the big city, Birmingham. But we kick things off in a tiny hamlet, Western Heath, where Raj has been dropped off at his first shop of the day, Corner Farm Antiques. Inside, there's a lot to love. Some very fine furniture and other delectable objects of virtue, an awful lot of which are way out of our man's price range, but let's see what he turns up, eh? This is a tantalus. They were where you kept your booze, locked up, basically. This bit opens up here, and inside there, you'd have had your cigars. And, of course, the reason that this was all locked up, because the houses that had these, they had servants running around the house, cleaning this, and in the old days, if they saw a decanter that they could get their hands on, they'd have a little swig as well. What's nice about this one, but if you press that there, that bottom drawer opens up. They would have had games in here. They can see there's got a crib board in here, but again, probably cigars as well, because this was really a smoking and drinks cabinet. All very nice, but can you afford it, Raj? This is just under £1,200. Slightly out of my budget. I'm going to have to keep looking. 
No sneaky tipples for you. Meanwhile, Arita has motored on. This car is so nice to drive, especially now when I'm in peace and quiet. <laughs> ah, you miss him, really. She's continuing south towards the town of Schiffnall, where she has a date at 2J's Corner Antiques and Vintage. We're all about these corners today, aren't we? Hello. Hi there. Hello there, Irita. Hello there, I'm Jackie. Hello, Jackie. Well, this looks like a big place. Thank you, yes. Shall I be opening drawers yes, and checking definitely. them? Right, I'll get at it. Yep, they're not short of stock in here. A bit of something for everyone. And with lots to rummage through, this looks like it could be fun. Mark you, the security guard looks a bit severe. Hello. Cup of tea, anyone? No. Hot chocolate is more me. And if you wanted to drink hot chocolate in 1800s, this is what you had. You actually have a pair here, a right-handed one and a left-handed one that would have been poured at the same time. One for your chocolate, one for your milk. Because chocolate was grated from big blocks and it was really heavy, it would sit at the bottom and the spout comes right at the bottom so you would get the best bit out of it because that is where the chocolate was. How clever, and believe it or not, in 1700s, they used chocolate, hot chocolate, as medicine. If you had problems, health issues, with liver or stomach, they gave you hot chocolate. Why don't doctors do that now? Oh, I think I got a bit of a tummy ache. Mm, fancy one myself now. Back in the other corner, how is Raj's search progressing? This is a proper antique shop, but a lot of it is way over my budget, so rather than look for the, the antique, I'm having to look for things that I can actually afford, and I found a set of gilt spoons here. They're all in good condition. They're in their original box as well. These aren't hallmarked at all. That means that they're not silver, because, or certainly not English silver. If they were English silver, they'd certainly have a hallmark, even though they were gilded, but these haven't. So. My opinion is that these are probably European, they could be French, they could be German. £18 on the ticket. I mean, there are still lots of collectors who collect spoons, but it's all going to come down to the price. Well, it's a start anyway. Meanwhile, down the road, Irita's hovering by the counter. She loves a hover. Jackie, can I have a look in this cabinet? Yes, certainly. I've spotted these goblets. Are they silver? Yes, they are. Hallmarked, Birmingham. Solid silver. And six of them? Yeah. They're quite sweet, aren't they? I like the shape of them. They just came with a job lot of silver that I had. Most of it was old. That was the most modern out of all of it. Yeah, because these are 1960s. Yeah, 1960s silver. Well, that one's been in wars, look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you see? Yeah. Luckily, it's just the bottom and not the yeah. top. Yeah. I mean, it is precious metal. Mm. And the thing is that no matter what happens... It's always going to be worth something. Exactly. Yeah. What kind of money are these? I'd be quite happy to take round about 150 for them. Oh, I won't say no for 150. I'll definitely have those. OK. I'm going out in style here, guys. Oh, where's my money? She's gone all giddy. That will bring her budget down to £820. I haven't even gotten them all out of the cabinet. I think she's rather pleased with that purchase. Time to pop back to the princess and head on out. <laughs> so happy. Like a pirate. Ahoy, matey! If you say so. Meanwhile, with one set of spoons earmarked, Raj is still hard at it. Oh, look at what we've got here. What would you like on a nice winter's chilly evening? A hot toddy. Exactly what I would like right now. And look what I found. It's a toddy ladle. Are you sure, Raj? Looks more like a candle snuffer to me. And this is a silver one with a lovely wooden handle. Now, this is made in the Georgian style, but it's not a Georgian one. It's actually a 20th century one, but it's very well made, looks great, and it's in great condition. So you'd have your bowl of, of alcohol and you'd scoop up and pour it into a glass. And this is basically how you measure your drink out. Or you'd snuff candles with it. A Georgian one like this with a nice wooden handle would probably set you back somewhere in the region of £200. This one on the ticket has £68. Much more your speed. 
whatever it is. Let's take everything to the dealer. Hello, Rosie. Hey, Raj. I found a couple of things mm -hmm. that I think I can afford. Yeah. I found these spoons. Mm hmm There's no hallmark or anything on them at all. And then you've got this uh, toddy ladle. Candle snuffer. Really like it. You've got £68 on the ticket on that yep. and 18 on that. OK. What would be your best? If we did 58 and then I could do uh, these spoons for 10. So that's £68. Yeah. Eight's a funny number. Don't you think so? I always find <laughs> if anything with an eight in really isn't a very good figure. Right, what OK. What about if I was to say £60 for cash? OK, yeah. You sure? We did 60. Ah, uh, shake my hand. Thank you so much, Rosie. OK. So, ten for the spoons and fifty for the ladle. <laughs> Candle snuffer. Whatever. Time we moved on to the next one. And as luck would have it, there's a passing antiques expert heading in the same direction. Do you know where we're going? Of course. Yeah. That's why you're the driver and I am the navigator. So, where are we going? Uh, straight on. <laughs> <laughs> Until the road ends. Yeah, and then I'll decide, OK? <laughs> Blimey. Well, fingers crossed they make it to their next port of call, just on the outskirts of Starbridge, and an emporium that's uniquely situated on a working airfield. <laughs> Chucks away, chaps. Confident? Yeah, look at you. Got all the swagger, haven't you? Yeah, go on then, go on. I might have a swagger. I have no idea, though. <laughs> oh, hello. hello. Hi, hello. ladies. I brought some trouble with me. This is Arita. <laughs> I'm Raj. And you are? I'm Claire and Dawn. Lovely to meet you. Which way are the bargains? I'll go that way. Everywhere. Oh, you would say that, wouldn't you? Well, I'll go that way, you go the other way. Sure. Is that a deal? Yeah. <laughs> love you really, Raj. We'll come back when we find Look, something. I love you too. <laughs> OK, see you later. There's plenty of room for both of them in half penny antiques, or hate me if you're of a certain vintage. Plenty of choice, too, and with the wares of 50 or so dealers spread across multiple rooms, and with £820 in the kitty for her and £935 for him, I'm sure one or two items will fly out of the door. There's a nice big uh, shelf here of clocks, but none of them seem to be working, so as far as I'm concerned, they're a waste of time. Hey, he's on top form today, isn't he? <laughs> this is... A very nice piece of Murano, what they call an oyster vase. They used to make it on the main island of Venice, but of course, due to fires, they had to move out to the island of Murano. It's really good quality, and this, you can feel it's got the weight. The reason it's called an oyster vase is, would you believe it? It looks like an oyster. Sometimes this antiques lock is that easy. Interested? The early Murano glass certainly fetches good money, but that was probably made to be honest, in the last five years. That's a no, then. Anything else in this little corner? Well, this is a nice little uh, Charles racing car. I mean, it says vintage, so it, it, and it's certainly got some rust on it, so it's definitely got a bit of age to it. It's quite a simple design. You know, it's metal. I guess it's maybe aluminium. I kind of like that. It's got 45 pounds on the ticket. I don't think it's one of those ones that's going to last forever, but I certainly think at the, if I can get it at the right price, that's going to make a lovely little gift for someone. I'm really interested in that. One to ask about, certainly. Anything grabbing the attention of our other shopper? Who on earth starts a new religion or opens a church just because they want a divorce? Henry VIII did. He started the Church of England and he had an interesting marriage life. You know, married life. <laughs> Went through whole six wives. Let me try to get this right. Divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. And glancing at the survival, it's the only one that's actually damaged. I double check. Henry's wives' heads do tend to come off rather easily. <laughs> These figures are not everyone's cup of tea. They were made in a German factory, Sitzendorf, that opened in 1850s, and they made some fantastic quality things. They were all handcrafted, they were all hand-painted. You can tell on the faces. Look at the detail of that, the beautiful little lips and the delicate detail, and it's the fingers that give it away the most. If a figurine has not been made well, it will have sausage fingers. Look at these. Look at these elegant hands. Those are no sausage fingers. £110 for the set. That's less than £16 per wife. If I have to be honest, I would like to buy them for £80, £90. 
whether that's doable or not, we'll find out. By the way, these will be coming with me. The Tudors are on the list then. Down at the other end of the store, Raj is a bit out of his depth. I mean, this room is particularly all kitted out with 1950s items. And of course, you know, retro items are really in vogue now. So, you know, for old experts like me, we're having to relearn. Sounds like you could do with some specialist help, eh, Pops? Claire. I mean, this is a real retro room, isn't it? I've noticed the West German vases, the bar, which is, I mean, you know, there's a time when I, I wouldn't have even looked at this, but I think it's really quite neat now. But what I'm really attracted to is this light. So it's a 1960s Sputnik light fitting. Um, it obviously based on all the space age from the 60s. It was, yeah, I mean, I absolutely love it. I know I shouldn't be biased, but it's my thing. I love the 60s. I notice there's no price ticket on it either. Does it come with a vase or, <laughs> or have you got a specific Sorry, price I on it? Sorry, I thought I am good at not putting price tickets on. Well, no? I've got 130 on it. OK, and what would be the very best on it? Well, as it's mine, yeah. and as it's you, I can do the straight 100 for you. Straight 100. Can I squeeze you for a little bit more? 98. Wow, my squeezes are really losing their value, to be honest. OK, but at £98, I'm not going to argue. Shake hands. Done. We have a deal. One Space Age light fitting in the old bag, and while you have Claire's attention, there's that toy car to consider. Well, you know we're on a road trip. Okay, yeah, so perfect. it seems very appropriate to have a little card because you know the ones that we have and sometimes break down. Got, yeah, I've backup got... plan. Exactly, it's a backup plan. You've got forty-five pounds on the ticket. Yep. Just give me the best price. I'm do twenty-five on that. At twenty-five, I'm not going to quibble. Let's shake hands. Lovely. Fantastic, Claire. You've been very generous. So, with the Sputnik light, that's a grand total of hundred and twenty-three pounds. Broom, broom, out of the way. Broom, 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 broom. Oh, broom, broom. Way. Good job he's not driving today, isn't it? Back inside, Irita's still scouring the shelves. Magpie Eye has spotted something. Oh, let's have a look then. Mm. How stylish is that? Scandinavian jewellery. This particular piece, it looks like it's silver with an absolutely stunning blue enamel. Now, the thing to check with enamel is the condition. Enamel is incredibly hard to repair and you do not want to buy damaged. The condition of this is looking good. Now, let's look for some marks. And on the clasp right at the end, it says Sterling Denmark. There's no actual maker's mark or any name, if you like, attached to it. It does have a price attached to it, 65 pounds. I really like that. I think it's a timeless, classic piece of jewellery that you could wear time and time again. And for that money, it would be crazy to leave that behind, wouldn't it? Well, you know what to do. Dawn. Oh, hello, Rita. I'm coming to spend big bucks. Good. The first thing I want to ask about is the enamel Danish necklace. That was priced at £65. Right. Any manoeuvre on that? Um, 48. That's fine. Then Henry VIII and his whole set of six oh, wives. Yes, yes. That was 110. They could be 80. OK. So that makes it 129. Well, you can oh, give yeah. me 129. Oh, oh no, I'm 128. <laughs> <laughs> Maths was never her strong suit. £128. Thank you, Don. Thank you, bye. Let's go and find your chum. Aye, aye, looks like he's commandeered an alternative mode of transport. What are you doing? I thought we'd just go for a little spin. <laughs> of course we are, because that's normal. I have to say, I'm not best friends with small little planes like this. Really? No. Oh, should we get a bigger one? Oh, my, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Headphones on. Are you a pro at this? What do you think? Engines on. Engines on. Pilot heat. What does pilot heat mean? <laughs> on the count of three, look relaxed. Go Relax, on. and we're going to slowly pull this out, right? Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Going up. I feel like I'm on a roller coaster. <laughs> what are those special non-moving roller coasters? Sky is the limit, Raj Bizram. No problemo. <laughs> If you've quite done, I think we'd better hand it back to its owner. All right, Raj, I'm keeping these because I can't hear you in them. Oh, you can't hear me in them. Perfect. <laughs> the... 
It's the perfect accessory. Completely mad. Mighty night. Next morning, we're back on terra firma. Where are we today, chaps? We're not far from Birmingham, you know. Did you know that Birmingham has more canals than Venice? Do you know, I didn't know that. Ooh, over 100 miles, I think. The thing that I associate with Birmingham are heavy metal. Heavy metal? Yeah, heavy metal. Black what? Sabbath. Oh, that yeah, kind of that heavy kind metal. Of, yeah, I didn't, what do you think? I mean, iron? Yeah, Steel? like lifting iron or something. <laughs> well, that went down like a lead balloon. Or was that some other band? There was a fair bit of metal involved in yesterday's shopping, with Raj picking up a silver candle snuffer, a box of gilded spoons, a space-age chromed light, and an aluminium toy car. Broom, broom, out of the way, broom, 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 oh, broom, broom. That leaves him with £812 in his pocket. Irita carried on the theme too, as she plumped for six silver goblets, a Danish enamelled necklace, and a set of non-metallic Tudor figurines. Divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. So, her budget now stands at £692. Now, let's see what today has in store for us. A location like this really, really makes me want to put my walking boots on and go hiking. We haven't got time for that. Oh, come on, Raj. Okay. Just a little detour. No, no, I'm sorry. We're focused. Antique shops. Oh, That's yeah. what we want to see. Party pooper! I know. He's so strict. Later, we'll be wending our way to Wales for an auction in Wrexham. But first, there's shopping to do, starting out at Henley and Arden, where Irita has been dropped off at the door of the vintage barn. Yeah, it looks as if it's got some age. Hello there. Hello, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good, Irita. Steve. Nice to meet you, Steve. Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Now then, I think I've got some work to do. Yep. Plenty to look at? Yep, loads all over. OK, I shall give you a shout when I find okay. something. OK. Great stuff. It's not just the barn that's vintage. Sarah and Steve have assembled an eclectic collection of bygones and retro delicacies. And you never know, there might be the odd antique tucked away in there too. I'm looking at this and I cannot quite figure out what it is. It's a dial pad by Stratton. Stratton is most known for making compacts. Well, this is how you kept contacts before mobile phones did it for you. Right, how does this work? I'm putting my finger on an eye. Witchcraft. Does that mean they would have opened to the right letter? That is clever. Right, you, you go and do some shopping. I'm going to just play here. Oh, right. <laughs> we'll leave you to it, then. Let's catch up with Raj, who's purloined the Vanden Pla and is heading northeasterly towards the village of Balsall Common. And his next shop is Antiques in a Barn. We're doing all the barns today, aren't we? This one's got chickens and Raj's old pal, Malcolm. Hello, Malcolm. Uh, hello there, Raj. Nice Good to see you again. And you. Well, it looks pretty well stocked up. I uh, hope you can find something today. I'm sure I will. Should I go right? Or should I go left? You decide. Did you notice what I did then? I did. I went right, right. which was left. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go this way. <laughs> that bodes well. Mind you, there's plenty to get lost in in this place. Lots of fine furniture and other assorted goodies to discover. And if he doesn't resurface, we can always send in a search party. So what have you found, Raj? Now, you see Toby jugs just about in every single antique shop you go to. Toby Jug is actually named, the story goes, after two Tobys. Toby Belch was a character in Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, and Toby Philpot was the guy they named the Brown Jug song. It was an 18th century song, and both of those Tobys were very, very big drinkers, and hence the Toby Jug was named. By that logic, teacups should be called Tim Cups. I quite like that, actually. Now, back in Henley, Irita's finally got her rummaging head on. Got some decanters and glass. But in all of that, this fella stands out. It's a little decanter. The stopper is in good condition. The collar is silver, which is nice. Adds a bit of quality to it. Nicely cut. All of this would have been ground out and hand cut. The shape is a bit odd because the smaller decanters usually are used for like vinegar or oil, but they tend to be taller 
I'm wondering whether this has been made as a ladies decanter so it isn't so heavy. There's something really sweet about it. That's ticketed at £65. I might be pouring myself some profit out of this if I can get it for the right price. I think that one's going on the list. Back over in Balsall Common, Raj is delving into uncharted territory for him. Malcolm. Yes, my mate. I've got a couple of questions. I've spotted these two and I really like them. They're obviously brooches yep. and date-wise I don't know and they're obviously, I presume, nine carat gold. They're nine carat gold. Yeah. Um, this is either late Victorian or Edwardian. Uh-huh. Very small diamond chipping in. And this one is the same date. What could you do the two of those for? Well, to be kind to you. Oh, looks like we're off to the counter. I don't normally buy jewellery because I don't know a lot about it. And I'm playing a little bit safe here because gold has a value. Yeah. But actually, I think they're really both attractive. That, 20 quid. And that, 35. How about 50 for the two? Yeah. We have a deal. Malcolm, a thank deal. you very much no, indeed. bless you. His last purchase of the day. Box thrown in for free. And with £762 left, he is off. Over in the other bar, and with that decanter earmarked, Irita's not done shopping yet. Oh, that's sweet. A little lady's fruit knife. How dinky and cute is that? This is made out of mother of pearl, and the blade itself is made out of solid silver. Nicely hallmarked. Why did they make them out of silver? So you wouldn't rust when you cut the fruit. And silver is self-sanitizing. They even used to make medical tools and stuff out of it. And it's a bit posh too. Ladies would carry these in their pocket or in their handbag because when they wanted a piece of fruit, They'd open it up, cut a little piece so they could eat it very delicately and beautifully. Not like we do now, you know, grab the whole thing and munch at it. You speak for yourself. I love that. It's nice, proper, antique. And it is £25. That's all I'm saying. Looks like that's a definite then. Off to the till. Hello. I like the sound of that. It's, good, it's rather isn't it? impressive, isn't quite it? Quite loud, quite loud. It is, yeah. Are you right. ready? That's how I got on. What OK, do you think? that's nice. I like that. So we got 65 for that and 25 for the knife. OK. So that's 90 for the two? Yeah. What OK. What could you possibly do for those? Would you be OK with 70? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Yeah. I'll yeah. be fine with 70. We'll leave the knife at £25, which makes the decanter £45 and £622 left over. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for You're all welcome. your help. Thank you. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Now, with all the shopping done, Raj is off on a musical adventure. He's headed into Birmingham and the King's Heath area. Back in the 1970s and 80s, this city became a hotbed of homegrown talent for a new sound from the Caribbean that was taking the British charts by storm, reggae music. To find out more, Raj is popping into the Hare and Hands, a hugely influential venue in the story of British reggae. Hello there. Greetings, sir. How are you, Raj? Basil, nice to meet you. I'm Raj. Nice to meet you, too. And who better to tell it than Birmingham reggae royalty, Basil Gabidon? What an old-fashioned venue this is. It's lovely, isn't it? This place has carried on the journey of live music, in particular reggae music. It's grown out of the community. Well, yeah. Name some of the bands that have actually played here. Well, UB40, obviously. Wow, they're a big band. Yeah. You had people like um, Musical Youth as well. Most of the bands from Birmingham, in particular Answorth, would have played here at some time or the other. It's that important, this place is, to keep in music alive. It's no surprise that reggae took hold here. After World War II, thousands of people arrived from Jamaica and other British overseas territories in the West Indies for a new life in the UK. Birmingham became home to the largest Afro-Caribbean population outside of London, and they set up communities in the city, bringing their culture and their music. But for these black British citizens, the welcome was often far from warm. There was a lot of places that you couldn't go. You, you know, people of colour were excluded. How did that affect you? Back in the day, yeah, you know, the police, if you ever went into the town as a kid, you'd be marched out very quickly, you know? 
So we never really frequented the city centre. There weren't any clubs that Caribbeans could go to in the city or so on. So they created their own, and these were in houses. When you're walking outside to go in, you could hear the bass. You, in fact, you could hear the bass up half a mile away. So, you know, so that drew you into it. And it was the bass that really got me into the music. That made me pick up a guitar and said, yeah, I want to learn to play guitar. Basil was a founder member of Steel Pulse, the first Birmingham reggae band to make it big on the international stage. They were one of many to come out of the inner city area of Handsworth. And over the years, they played this venue many times. What inspired you to write your songs? We started to look into all the ills that were going on in the world and um, Biafra, people starving and all that type of stuff. So that kind of got us together to say, OK, we're going to do something different. We are not just going to play our commercial music. You know, some bands were doing that, but we had something to say. Despite a long career with chart hits, Grammy Awards and even a tour with Bob Marley and the Wailers, Steel Pulse never forgot their Handsworth roots. And across the city, heading into Handsworth, is our other music lover. She's here to get into the reggae vibe with African drum maestro Nikki Reed. How long have you been playing? I've been playing for about 44 years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it, it's in your core, isn't it? I think it's part of the DNA now. Yeah. <laughs> can you make it part of my DNA? Come and sit down. Well, if anyone can, it'll be Nicky. So we're going to have two areas of your hand. One to play the bass in the middle, the flat, and the other one half the palm here. OK. And we're playing this sound, letting the palm bounce. And this is the open tone. Yeah. OK. So we're going to combine those two together to play yeah. go. Gota. Okay. Gota, gota. Again. Ooh. Gota, gota. She's getting the groove now. Yeah. <laughs> High five. Well done. That was amazing. Fantastic. That was really, really spicy. Is that a word you would describe reggae in a way? Spicy. It's got spice. It's got feeling, and it's it's political, and it's it's a, it's a love music as well, and it's also it's you know it's sending a message. Most important is in the message. It looks like a very appropriate place to do this with that mural behind us. Yes. So the mural represents the musicians of Birmingham, famous bands like we're standing behind Steel Pulse right here. We have Pat Banton over there. And now it's us. And now it's us. <laughs> Should we play one more time? Go on. One, two, one, two. The mural, which covers the Handsworth Wellbeing Centre, is a collaboration between artist Bunny Bread and arts development agency Simmerdan. It's aimed to keep these local reggae legends alive in the minds of the city's residents. And according to operations director Alex Williams, that's not the only way they're keeping the reggae rhythm going. We also do a flagship festival, and that happens in the park, which is just down the bottom there, so we normally get about 20,000 people. That festival happens every year, and we've been doing that for the last 12 years. And I believe you're going to play for us. Yes, we're going to do a little bit of a track. What he means is we will play for you. Yes, we're no, still contemplating that. That's not what I meant. <laughs> OK, that, that is well, definitely that is not what I meant. that is what's going to happen. <laughs> well, when you've got a reggae supergroup with Basil, Nicky and vocalist Candice at your disposal, it would be rude not to. Jamaica via this little corner of Brum to a worldwide audience. Reggae music's huge appeal has transcended racial and cultural barriers, and as our Handsworth Jam session proves, it's better to be in harmony. <laughs> yeah. One love, you might say. <laughs> Time to get the band back on the road. We've got another gig to get to. You're looking forward to the auction? Yeah? Confident with your items? Yes. Good answer, good answer. Although slightly tentative, <laughs> okay, which is another thing I like. But first, shut eye. 
Auction day dawns and our experts are champing at the bit. <laughs> Good morning! Can't wait, point wrong. It's exciting as always. But of course, our pair have scoured the shops of the West Midlands and have brought all of their finds to Wrexham. Back at Wingate's Auctioneers once more, with bids on the books on the net and up close and personal in the sale room. Marita splashed out a sizeable £348 on her five auction lots. Let's see if any of it strikes a chord with today's auctioneer, Duffid Griffiths. Silver goblets are a nice lot. There's a lot of weight to them. Silver's very high at the moment as well. Good collectible sort of lots. We expect this to go very well. Raj was a little more careful with the cash, blowing £233 on his five lots. What appeals, Duffid? I think the racing car is my personal favourite. I think it's a bit of fun and a lot of people have been asking about it. It'll sell well. Nice thing to see. Time we took our seats and bagged a bird's eye view. <laughs> I'm nervous today. Are you? Yeah. You hey. don't strike me as someone who's being nervous. You're always full of confidence. I'm like a swan. Calm on the top and the legs going. <laughs> well, it's Raj taking the plunge first. His roll along racing car. How much for it? Give me 60, 80 pounds, somebody. Easy, lovely. Bit of fun. 50 then, come on. 50 we have. Thank you to start things off. Oh, that is the most there. expensive little oh, metal oh, car oh, I've ever seen. Pounds. All done with it. All it's lovely nine. thing. 50 pounds then. Yes. I am amazed. Not to 50 in about 15 seconds. I feel good. <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> Ten then. Zoom the world. Now, if Irita's next lot doesn't do well, heads will roll. I have got fifty pound of meters down. Oh, okay. okay. oh, at eighty pound of bids on the internet. Currently at eighty pound. Who'll say five now? Eighty-five bid ninety. Ninety bid and five. One hundred. One ten. One twenty. Please, anyone? Pounds. Room bid. Currently at one hundred and ten. One twenty. Last chance. If only he had eight wives. <laughs> Well done, Irita. No one's mocking those Tudors. Thirty pounds. That's five or a wife. Yeah, sounds expensive to me. <laughs> Next up, the Sputnik light. It's one giant leap for Raj. This is my big spin. Is it? I went way out of my comfort zone here. How much for it? Give me fifty away on that, somebody. Start me then. Thirty pounds. Thirty a half. Thank you now. Start me now. Straight in at thirty pounds. We'll say five. We've got forty. And five. Oh, it's okay. It's moving. It's moving. It's moving. It's moving. Fifty pound. We're in the room then. Currently fifty five back in. Sixty is it now? On five. Sixty pound of bid still in the room. Keep sixty five seventy. Still in the room. Seventy five eighty. Seventy five pound of bid. One more. More. Come on. It's still cheap. Sold at seventy five. Let's just move on. Sad face. <laughs> yes. Didn't quite fly out of the room. It was the first time I bought a Sputnik lamp, and the last. <laughs> <laughs> time for Irita's bit of Danish bling. That enamelled necklace. I have got. Sixty-five pounds. Start me off. Trading to sixty-five. Seventy bid and five. Eighty bid and five. Oh my goodness, guys! It's happened again now. to me. No. Eighty-five pound of bid to me. Covering ninety amount. 90 oh, please don't. One thirty bid. One forty. One fifty, 150, if you like. One sixty. No. One seventy. One eighty. Oh. One ninety. Two hundred. Two twenty. Two forty. Oh Two sixty. Oh. Two eighty. <laughs> 280 back in. 300 yeah, is it now? Why not? Let's go the whole way. 280 pound of bids online against the room. <laughs> All done with it. Online at 280 pound then. <laughs> that deserves a clap. Not half. That's nearly six times what she paid for it. I cannot believe it. What can I say? Wow. Yeah. Raj again, looking to stir things up with this lot. If these teaspoons I spent a tenner on make. Fifteen hundred pounds. <laughs> I've got a chance. Okay. What are those worth? Thirty, forty pounds. Somebody old case up and ready to go. Twenty. Come pounds. on. Come. Anywhere. On. Ten then. Oh no. If I could bid, I would. Ten we have. Good man. Straight in at ten pound at the back of the room. At Twelve I got. Forty. Wake up, bro. Oh. <laughs> Fourteen bid. Sixty. Eighty. Twenty. Wake, That's more like it. Eighteen bid. Twenty. Twenty pound. I'll take five anywhere else. You've doubled your money. Then. Thank you, my own money. Yes. <laughs> nice one, Raj. Got a result in the end. Didn't look good, though, to start with, did it? <laughs> no. Irita's pint-sized decanter is next. Well, maybe half pint-sized. It is a nice-looking decanter there. Nobody won it. £50. Come on. 30 then. Come on. £30 a half. Thank you, man. Start me off. Trade in. 35 bid. 40. And five. 
45 pound that still seems cheap there at 45 pound we're looking it for does a 50 seem cheap. it does seem 45 cheap 45 pound it's in the room and being sold your bid sir well that was something better than a loss i rita i don't need profits <laughs> now i think we'll let raj describe his next item i bought it as a, a ladle and it's obviously a candle snuffer no, now I see it. It's obviously a candle snuffer. How much for it? Give me 30, 40 pounds, somebody. Oh, it's worth that. 20 then, come on. 20 we have, 25 bid. 30 is it now on the internet? 30, come on, it's got to What did you pay? 50. Oh, good decorative looking lot there at 25 pounds, you're finished. Oh. Sold online then. Lovely. I think that might have extinguished your chances of winning this one. If you need a cuddle, let me know. Yeah. I'll get over it. I will get over it. Our eater's fruit knife is next. Just the thing for dainty eaters. Nice, sweet little thing, this. £20 I got, £20. thank you, start me off. Against they just need more. Things, £25 a fresh, bit of 30 is oh it now? Oh, my goodness. That's Come on, give me cheap a there at £25. That's £25, you finished. Hold on at £25. Washed its face. How'd you like them apples? i got to tell its story. It's all that matters. I've made so much money, I don't need to worry about it anymore. Who cares? <laughs> Last lot for Raj now. Can his brooches put a bit of sparkle back in his day? £40, not a bad start. Oh, £40 bid straight away. 45, 50 bid and five, 60 bid and five, if you like. £65 a bid under the heater at 65 You're in the money. That's £65, you're finished. Your bid, sir. You must be happy with that. Unlike you, I'm happy with £10, £15 pounds profit. And it is your second highest one of the day. I know you only work in three figures. It all adds up. That's all you need to remember. It all adds up. And finally, Arita's half dozen solid silver goblets. Will we be toasting a win here? I genuinely have good feeling about this. Oh, am I going to jinx it? Am I going to jinx it? £200, not a bad start there. Straight in at £200. I'll say £220 now. £220 bid, 240 260 Wow. 260 bid, 280 Wow. At £260, you're finished. I tell you what, you're going to be walking the rest of this trip, OK? I'm throwing you out the car, OK? <laughs> Sounds like he's worked out how this one went. Are you going to come and uh, scrape me off the floor? <laughs> yeah, where's my shovel? <laughs> For the rest of us, here's those numbers in full. Today wasn't Raj's best performance. Despite some profits, he made a loss after auction fees of £40.30. and pence. But the standing ovation goes to Irita. After showroom costs, she netted a whopping £242.40p. Bravissimo! So, she takes the lead, with two auction wins to one, and only a couple more to fight for in this best of five. Ooh, that was something, wasn't it? Yeah, you I did feel... really well. OK, OK. <laughs> Don't let this grow. Whoa, you bad girl. <laughs> Next on the trip, age before beauty. I'm nearly as old as this classic car. No, you're not. You're older. This is... <laughs> Cut and thrust. Anything you can do, I can do better. I just pinched my own finger. And kiss and makeup. Yeah. Give, me, give me a cuddle. That is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. 